is presenting, sir. Ah, where is she? Sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Oh, she. <laughs> I thought the Titania is a male name also, isn't it? Yes, sir. I had, I had a student called Titania Vignesh in New York Hospital. Okay. Yes, sir. Always there will be some suffix of male component. Okay. What is your full name? Chaitanya? Oh, just Chaitanya, sir. Just Chaitanya. Okay, right. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my topic is one lung ventilation, sir. Uh, one lung ventilation is first conceptualized by physiologists Edward Flugger and Claude Bernard, who studied gas exchange in dogs using a lung isolation catheter. Uh, first, the first instance of clinical use in humans was by Lowy and von Schroter, sir, with lower low bronchus catheterized under fluoroscopic control. Gale and Waters endobronchial tube is found in 1932. Magill's cupped endobronchial tube found in 1936. It is the first attempt to compensate for the different anatomy of left and right bronchus. One lung ventilation is not synonymous with thoracic anesthesia. It is a part of strategy which may be used in thoracic anesthesia, could be a part of cardiac anesthesia, could be used in surgeries like esophagectomy, spine surgeries, and also in critical care where patient presented with trauma and disruption in tracheobronchial tree or a patient with ruptured lung cysts and abscesses where we want to isolate both lungs. Here, I will discuss the topic in two parts, isolation techniques and strategies that are used in one lung ventilation. So, what is one lung ventilation? It means separation of the two lungs where each lung functions independently by preparation of the airway. It provides protection of healthy lung from infections, bleeding from the diseased yeah. lung, and it provides diversion of ventilation away from damaged airway or lung and it provides improved exposure of surgical field. But what does it cause? It causes more manipulation of airway and more damage. It causes physiological changes and easy development of hypoxemia. Coming to the indications of one lung ventilation, there are absolute indications and relative indications. Coming to absolute indications, isolation of one lung from the other to avoid spillage or contamination and unilateral bronchopulmonary lavage and control of the dial district control of distribution of ventilation in case of fistula cyst and tracheobronchial tree disruption relative indications for better surgical exposure and for cardiopulmonary bypass status and after removal of totally occluding chronic unilateral pulmonary emboli so what are the options available for us to achieve lung isolation? There are three techniques, double lumen tubes, bronchial blockers, univented tubes. If we don't have these, we can use conventional ET tubes advanced into the bronchus. First, we will see what the DLT is. Double lumen tubes. As the name mentioned, it has two lumens. One is tracheal lumen, one is bronchial. Bronchial lumen is blue in color, blue colored cup, blue colored pilot balloon. Tracheal lumen is transparent in color, transparent pilot balloon with transparent cup. We need to understand the tracheobronchial tree anatomy as there is a big difference in de design between right and left tubes. Width of trachea is 18 to 19 mm. But when we look at the division between right and left, right bronchus is wider, shorter and less angulated approximately 25 degrees from the midline. Whereas left bronchus is longer, narrower and more angulated, nearly 45 degrees from the midline. One special and important thing about right bronchus is outshoot, outshoot of right upper lobe, which we have to ventilate specially when we are using right DLT. To achieve this, right DLT is having much more oblique cuff or bron bronchial balloon and is much shorter in length. And also there is a slot at the end to ventilate right upper lobe. Whereas if we look at the left DLT, it is much longer and it's much rounded and smaller in diameter. 
to decide the length and size of TLT, we depend on three parameters, age, height, and bronchial width. Coming to age, according to age, eight to 10 years of uh, age needs 26 French tube, 10 to 12 years, 28 French, 12 to 15 years needs 32 French, and greater than 15 years, around 35 French. According to height, if the patient is greater than 150 centimeters, generally needs 35 French to 37 French. And if the patient is greater than 170 centimeters, needs 37 to 39 French, greater than 180 centimeters, usually needs 39 to 41 French tubes. We can decide the size of tube depending on the CT guided size of the bronchial width. To decide the depth of the insertion, for 170 centimeters height, tube depth of 29 centimeters is required. And for every 10 centimeters in change, we need to change one centimeters depth. For Indian subset of population, to make it simple, for females, 32 to 35 French is used. For males, 35 to 37 French is required. Coming to the placement and confirmation of DLT, under direct laryngoscopy, the double lumen tube is passed with the distal curvature concave anteriorly and is rotated 90 degrees towards the side of the bronchus to be intubated. After the tip passes the vocal cords, that is, that is to be rotated 90 degrees and enters the larynx. The tube can be advanced until resistance is felt. The average depth of insertion is about 29 centimeters at the teeth level. Confirmation is done in three steps, auscultation and flexible fiber optic bronchoscopic examination, alternatively by CM guided. Protocol for checking placement of left-sided double lumen tube is Inflate the tracheal cuff with 5 to 10 ml of air. Check for bilateral breath sounds. Unilateral breath sounds indicates that the tube is too far down. Inflate the bronchial cuff 1 to 2 ml and clamp the tracheal lumen. Tracheal lumen. Check for unilateral sided breath sounds. If pers persistence of right sided breath sounds indicates that the bronchial opening is still in the trachea and the tube should be advanced more. Unilateral right-sided breath sounds indicate incorrect entry of the tube into the right bronchus and absence of breath sounds over the entire right lung and the upper left, left upper lobe indicates that the tube is too far down in the left bronchus. Un now, unclamp the tracheal lumen and clamp the bronchial lumen. Check for unilateral right-sided breath sounds. Absence or diminution of breath sounds indicates that the tube is not far enough down and that the bronchial cuff is occluding the distal trachea. Even if the DLT is thought to be properly positioned by clinical science, subsequent fiber optic bronchoscopy may reveal an incidence of malpositioning in 38 to 78 percent of situations. Nowadays, we are having viva side DLTs in adult sizes. In this, we have a tip camera, which we insert in the tracheal clip. Hence, we don't need to check with fiber optic bronchoscope. This helps in identifying position of tip of DLT. Coming to bronchial blockers, lung separation can be effectively achieved with the use of a single human ET tube and a fiber optic bronchoscope placed bronchial blocker. When we don't have DLT of adequate size, or especially for children, it is useful. Balloon tipped lumen catheters have the advantage of allowing suction and injection of oxygen down to the central lumen. Indication for bronchial blockers is where there is limitation to double lumen tube insertion, like distortion of airways, tracheostomized patients, children, anticipated difficult intubation, and to avoid a risk in changing the DLT to single lumen tube whenever post-operative ventilation is anticipated or in case of thoracic spine surgeries where the position is frequently changed and need of uh, checking the um, double lumen tube is frequent. Situations in which both lungs may need to be blocked one after the other like bilateral lung surgeries and when one lung ventilation is decided on the table, 
bronchial blockers are bronchial blockers are useful types of bronchial blockers hoop deck blockers ez blocker with two bronchial cuffs and ant bronchial blockers with nylon loop for two small children where even bronchial blockers are also not useful when we don't have a blocker of reliable size also then we can use fogarty embolectomy catheter with a 3 ml balloon it has a stillet so that it is possible to place a curvature at the distal tip to facilitate entry into the larynx and either main stem bronchus at times foley's catheter and schwanganz catheter are also been used as bronchial blockers for very small children of less than 10 kg fogarty catheter with 0.5 ml balloon or schwanganz catheter with 1 ml balloon are used disadvantages compared to dlt are inability to suction and to ventilate the distal uh, lung to the block this blocker increased uh, increased placement uh, time uh, is also one disadvantage the definite need for the fiber optic or rigid bronchoscopic confirmation and uh, if bronchial blocker comes out and backs out into the trachea the seal between the two lungs will be lost and the trachea will be partially obstructed by the blocker and ventilation will be greatly impaired if we won't notice this complication patient will arrest by the time we find out why we are not able to ventilate about univent tubes it is easier to insert and properly position and can be properly positioned during continuous ventilation and in the lateral decubitus position also no need to change the tube when uh, turning from the supine to prone position or for post operative mechanical ventilation selective blockade of some lobes of each lung is possible it possible to apply cpap to non ventilated operative lung is also one advantage of univent tubes to summarize DLT is the method of choice for lung separation in most adult patients. The precise location can be obtained by determined by fiber optic bronchoscopy. In situations where insertion of a DLT may be difficult and dangerous, separating the lungs is achieved either with the single lumen tube alone or in combination with bronchial blockers. Therefore, regardless of what method of lung separation chosen, there is a real need of small diameter fiber optic bronchoscopy to check the position of the uh, dlt or bronchial blocker physiology of one lung ventilation first we need to understand the physiology of lung in upright position lower part of the lungs because of the persistent pressure on basal alveoli or basal alveoli are collapsed and hence they lie in the steep part of the lung compliance curve so ventilation preferably goes to the upper part of the lung when person is in lying down on lateral decubitus position and spontaneously breathing it is dependent part of the lung which lies on the steep part of the lung compliance curve here this is good this is good thing for us because perfusion is also more on the dependent lung so there is uh, less ventilation perfusion mismatch but when patient is paralyzed and uh, here functional residual capacity is decreased and loss of chest recoil uh, also there so the dependent lung goes to flat flat part of the lung compliance curve that is the preferred ventilation is going to non dependent lung so ventilation perfusion mismatch is more effects of anesthesia in lateral decubitus position the induction of anesthesia and muscle paralysis decreases functional residual capacity secondary to the loss of muscle tone in the chest wall and diaphragm with the lateral decubitus position dependent lung compliance is reduced and shifting most of the ventilation towards the upper lung during total lung ventilation pulmonary perfusion preferably goes to the dependent lung due to gravity once the lung is isolated one lung ventilation is, in, is initiated both the ventilation hence reducing ventilation perfusion mismatch occurs now 
we will see step by step how we can maintain one lung ventilation from induction of anesthesia to initiation of one lung ventilation once we induce the patient derecruitment is a common cause of desaturation during one lung ventilation alveolar recruitment maneuvers improve oxygenation and ventilation during two lung ventilation and the effects can persist into the one into the period of one lung ventilation Alveolar recruitment uh, maneuvers just prior to one lung ventilation increases the aeration and lung compliance during one lung ventilation. Furthermore, it decreases atelectotrauma. Uh, repeat uh, alveolar recruitment maneuvers can be injurious to the lung. So, once we have induced, before going to one lung ventilation, we need to do two things. Performing uh, alveolar recruitment maneuvers and ventilate the lung with FIO to 100%. Now, establishing the establishing and maintaining one lung ventilation. For this, we have to keep the uh, eight things in mind. Those are tidal volume, PEEP, FIO2, IE ratio and respiratory rate, alveolar recruitment maneuvers, and permissive hypercapnia, peak plateau, peak pressures, plateau pressures, and driving pressures, ventilation modes. In brief, Protective lung strategy includes tidal volume of 4 to 6 ml per kg is adequate. If hypoxia or severe hypercapnia is there, then consider 6 to 8 ml per kg. PEEP. For restrictive and normal lungs, 5 to 10 cm water is helpful and obstructive airway disease patients, 2 to 5 cm of water is enough to minimize intrinsic PEEP. Respiratory rate of 15 to 18 per minute is uh, uh, helpful and FIO2 depending on situation by maintaining SpO2 for uh, a, by maintaining SpO2 for transplant patients 21 percent of uh, FIO2 is uh, enough and for routine surgeries 50 to 80 percent in hypoxemic patients 100 percent of FIO2 is to be considered. Coming to IE ratio for restrictive lung diseases 1 is to 1 or inverse ratio ventilation is considered. For normal lung, 1 is to 2. For obstructive lung diseases, 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4 is to be set. Coming to pressures, plateau pressure of less than 20 cm of water and peak pressures less than 35 cm of water are safe. Coming to mechanical minute ventilation, to adjust to, to uh, adjust the PECO to 50 to 70 mm of Hg, mechanical uh, minute ventilation is to be adjusted. Coming to ventilator modes, pressure control volume guarantee ventilation is preferred or uh, newer methods like driving pressure ventilation is preferred. Coming to maintenance of anesthesia, initially inhal inhalational anesthetics were considered detrimental during one lung ventilation due to inhibition of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. The newer inhalational anesthetics appear to have lesser effects on HPV. Rather, inhalational anesthetics appear to be lung protective. One thing we should keep in mind is we should not use higher max. With one lung ventilation, a pro-inflammatory reaction takes place exhibited by insert, uh, increased cytokine levels in bronchoalveolar lavage samples in each lung. Compared with controls, inhaled anesthetics result in alteration of cytokine elevations. Uvolumic fluid strategy should be used. From one lung ventilation to extubation, once the surgery is over, re-expansion of the operative lung with lung recruitments at the conclusion of one lung ventilation serves multiple purposes. Like restoration of normal lung expansion is necessary to re-establish the pleural interface and to minimize any post-operative pneumothorax and alveolar recruitment maneuvers optimize post-op pulmonary functions and restore ventilation, per, ventilation perfusion mismatch. Caution uh, to be taken care not to uh, disturb the staple lines and hemodynamic instability is to be considered in this phase because there is uh, considerable blood loss during surgery. Lung re-expansion may worsen lung injury due to ischemic reperfusion injury in the presence of reactive uh, oxidative species and oxidative stress. Lower FIO2 should be employed as hypoxemic reperfusion has been shown to alternate, attenuate the 
inflammatory response and organ injury but too long vital capacity maneuver is undesirable because over distension and potential volume trauma in the more compliant non operative lung selective lung re lung re expansion with the use of either a second circuit or transient isolation of the non operative lung allows targeted pressure to the atelectatic operative lung this is all done to avoid acute lung injury how to diagnose acute lung injury based on an acute reduction in the pao to fio2 ratio to less than 300 bilateral pulmonary infiltrations on chest radiography in the absence of left heart failure acute lung lung injury is a leading cause of death after thoracic surgery there is accumulating evidence that one lung ventilation management can influence the incidence of severity of this complication a brief explanation about ventilation induced lung injury it is a complex interaction of volume trauma barotrauma atelecto trauma and biotrauma ventilation induced lung injury can exacerbate with existing lung injury or sensitize the lung for the further injury if we have used a good intraoperative ventilatory strategy it would reduce in incidence of acute lung injury now we will take a look into predictors of intraoperative hypoxemia patient perspective and procedure perspective patient perspective predictors are prior contralateral resection normal lung function chronic vaso vasodilator therapy poor oxygenation or on preoperative mechanical ventilation or sepsis procedure perspective uh, predictors are right sided surgery and supine position uh, use of uh, excessive vaso va volatile anesthetics if patient does develop hypoxemia then what to do increase the fio2 to 100% if the complete uh, if the hypoxemia is life threatening stop the surgery and resume bilateral ventilation if it is non life threatening then continue with one lung ventilation and if it is treatable cause then check the position of dlt and reposition and suction the secretions blood and mucus correct the hemodynamic parameters if it is non treatable cause then optimize ventilation by increasing fio2 giving cpap to the operative lung and tip to the non operative lung optimize perfusion by giving inhalational prostacyclines and nitric oxide or clamp to pulmonary artery so that ventilation perfusion mismatch is corrected and one more method selective low bar oxygenation for operative lung can also be done other techniques which have been used for tracheal and carinal surgeries are high frequency ventilation high frequency ventilation delivers very small tidal volumes of less than 2 ml per kg at high rates greater than 60 breaths per minute it can be delivered through very small catheters it decreases pawp high frequency uh, ventilation is useful in facilitating performance of thoracic surgery like major conducting airway surgery bronchopleural fistulas and to minimize movement of operative field the other methods are low flow apneic ventilation if ventilation is stopped during administration of 100% oxygen airway is left connected to the fresh gas supply and oxygen is drawn into the lungs by mass movement to replace the diffused oxygen no difficulty in maintaining an adequate pao2 especially if 5 to 10 cm of cpap is used for at least 20 minutes if flow of oxygen is relatively low that is less than 0.1 liter per kg per minute almost all co2 produced is retained and pco2 is raised uh, approximately 6 mm of hg in the first minute and then 3 to 4 mm of hg each minute thereafter safe period is less than 20 minutes arterial oxygen saturation monitoring via pulse oximetry is mandatory now recently ecmo ecmo is also been used in thoracic surgeries especially if the surgery is more th more of hemodynamic instability and it is difficult to maintain ventilation like surgeries of carina surgeries of large mediastinal mass involving great vessels thank you sir thank you
Again, I want to know whether you are a primary candidate or a post BA candidate. Post diploma, sir. Post diploma. Uh, this is too exhaustive and uh, uh, too elaborate for the question that has been asked. And, uh, all these points cannot be written, as I said, in, for the first presenter within the 20 minutes time that you have for your uh, theory question answering. So it has to be made more concise and uh, to the point. And, uh, Oh, on only oh. to the one lung ventilation, mainly using W1 tube. Other last methods, uh, what you have described up to going up to ECMO and all is not normally accepted as part of the answer for this question. So, yes, sir. you need not waste time on all those things. Okay, uh, sir. So because you now we are running short of time, I'll straight away go for the presentation to make 